Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. By the late Permian, derived synapsid proto-mammals were the dominant form of terrestrial megafauna, inhabiting all kinds of ecological niches, from tiny burrowing herbivores to massive bear-sized predators. However, only a few select lineages even vaguely resembled modern mammals, with the most notable of these being the carnivorous, almost dog-like Thoracophalians and the subject of today's episode, the Cynodonts. First appearing during the late Permian roughly 260 million years ago, these animals were initially rare, but thrived after the end Permian extinction event, diversifying rapidly into a wide array of niches, ranging from tiny weasel-like animals to big bulky herbivores with superficially rodent-like teeth. The clade is united by a number of anatomical traits, including fully differentiated heterodont teeth, brain cases that bulged out at the back of the head, large temporal openings in the skull that housed strong muscles, and a reduced number of bones in the jaw. This move towards a single bone for the mandible paved the way for the other bones in the jaw, such as the articular and angular, to migrate up to the cranium, where they function as part of the mammalian hearing system. By the late Triassic, one derived group of cynodonts, the mammalia forms, split off and would give rise to true mammals, meaning that I, as well as everyone watching this video, are technically cynodonts, much as modern birds are still dinosaurs. In fact, non-mammalian cynodonts are quite a lot like maniraptor and dinosaurs such as dromaeosaurs or troodontids, in being somewhat transitional forms, between more archaic ancestors and familiar modern forms. Although paleontologists know significantly less about the soft biology of these ancient synapsids, it is strongly suspected that non-mammalian cynodonts were active endothermic animals that probably possessed furry coats in at least some species, although direct fossil evidence for this is slight. They had developed soft pellets in the roof of the mouth, which would have enabled early cynodonts to breathe and chew at the same time, while the outer structure of their ears is poorly understood, although Mark Witten has suggested that these consisted of simple openings that lacked pinnae. Like monotremes, these animals laid eggs, although seem to have produced very large litters of highly precocial young, with a well-preserved mother Chientotherium fossil from the early Jurassic having been found in association with her 38 unborn offspring. Once hatched, these babies were probably able to fend for themselves, needing very minimal parental care. Unlike almost all modern mammals, but much more like the conditions seen in many reptile species. In addition, the brains of early cynodonts were notably smaller than those of the more derived mammalia forms, supporting the hypothesis that the evolution of larger brain size in early mammals was associated with changes in reproductive strategy to invest more parental energy in a smaller number of offspring. Cynodonts first appeared during the late Permian and originated as modestly sized carnivores, with the most basal genus probably being Charasonathus from South Africa. Only known from a crushed skull, partial lower jaw and one of the forelimbs, this was a small animal, potentially up to 50 centimetres or 20 inches long. Its skull represents something of a halfway point between the later cynodonts and the more basal Thoracophalians, being close in form to the common ancestor of both groups. Another basal form, Procyonosuchus, was similar in size and may have been semi-aquatic, representing an early example of synapsids returning to the water. Basal cynodonts were relatively rare and minor animals in the Permian, although their burrowing habits and small size allowed them to survive the extinction event at the end of the period. With many of their larger synapsid cousins now extinct, cynodonts radiated rapidly during the early Triassic, essentially evolving to fill many mammal-like niches. One of the best known forms found almost immediately after the extinction event was the genus Thrinaxodon, represented by multiple well-preserved specimens. Native to South Africa and Antarctica, this was a small pine martin sized animal with sharp cutting teeth, indicating a diet composed of small tetrapods and invertebrates. A proficient burrower, Phrenaxodon would have somewhat resembled a strange long tailed badger that moved with a semi erect gait and probably possessed some kind of hairy coat. Like modern mammals, it may have had a diaphragm and seems to have been a relatively gregarious animal, 
with the remains of multiple individuals having been found in the same burrow. The back and pelvis of this genus gave it the ability to curl up inside of its burrow while in a state of torpor, a fact confirmed by a remarkable fossil find of a Thranaxodon in its den, accompanied by an injured Brumistega temnospondyl. Forms such as this gave rise to the clade Eucynodontia, which split into two major lineages, with these being the mostly omnivorous and herbivorous Cynonathians and the Probinonathians, which were ancestrally carnivorous or insectivorous, but also developed herbivorous forms of their own. The most basal of Cynonathia was the genus Cynonathus itself, a relatively large, heavily built form from the Southern Hemisphere, native to the Middle Triassic of South Africa, Argentina, Antarctica, and Namibia. This carnivorous animal possessed a robust skull equipped with prominent stabbing fangs. Overall, Cynonathus measured about 2 meters or just over 6 feet long, and dwelt alongside a diverse array of other synapsids, as well as archosauriform reptiles, which had radiated rapidly after the end Permian extinction event. While synaptids were no longer the dominant apex predators in the Triassic, with archosaurs generally taking over this niche, it is still impressive that carnivorous cynodonts the size of large dogs were able to hold their own in this context. As far as we know, the true mammals and their relatives were not able to replicate this success during the Jurassic and Cretaceous. In fact, an even larger, as yet unnamed genus purported to be a close relative of Cynonathus has been uncovered from the Omnigonde formation of Namibia. Although known from a single skull, it has been estimated that this animal was about the size of a brown bear, weighing up to 353 kilograms or 778 pounds. More derived members of Cynonathia appear to have transitioned to more omnivorous diets, such as the impressive Diademodon, also from the Middle Triassic of South Africa. Measuring about two meters long, this animal possessed a massive skull that was incredibly wide at the rear to accommodate powerful jaw muscles. The canines were huge, while the post-canine teeth seems to have been adapted for chewing plant matter, perhaps suggesting an omnivorous diet. Like Cynonathus, it was probably a hairy animal that may have also possessed whiskers given the pits and canals present on their snouts. Other members of Cynonathia were notably smaller such as the 50 cm long fossorial genus Triracodon, which is also a contemporary of Cynonathus in the Karoo Basin of South Africa. The burrow systems created by this animal were relatively large and complex in structure, suggesting a degree of complex mammal-like social behaviour. The most derived group within Cynonathia were the Traversodontids, which tended to be either omnivores or generalist herbivores. Some forms were small animals, such as Macetonathus, a guinea pig-sized herbivore with a flattened broad snout, fang-like canines, and molars well suited for grinding vegetation. Fossils of this genus are very common in mid-Triassic Brazil and Argentina, suggesting that this genus was a somewhat rodent-like herbivore with high population densities, as well as high mortality rates, especially when young. Other traversodontids from the late Triassic were far more massive, being among the largest of all non-mammalian cynodonts. The genus Exoratodon was a heavily built, roughly pig-sized animal with a proportionally robust skull equipped with pretty fearsome looking teeth. However, it was a fairly specialized herbivore, perhaps living somewhat like a modern wombat. It dwelt alongside a variety of early dinosaurs, such as Eoraptor and Panphagia, with Hererosaurus probably being a major predator of Exoratodon. The closely related Scalodentoides from South Africa was potentially even larger, with one partial skull belonging to this genus estimated to have measured 61 centimeters long when complete, indicating a size comparable to an American black bear. Despite their success in the Triassic, Cynonathians died out at the end of the period, succumbing to the extinction event that also claimed many of the bizarre archosauriforms, as well as the majority of megafaunal synapsids. Their sister group, the Probinonathians, however, were a different story. These first appeared during the early Triassic, with basal forms represented by the small and semi-fossorial genus Lumcuia and the Carnian age Chinicodon, which is a successful and long-lived carnivore about the size of a Scottish terrier. This genus dwelt in both South America and Africa, thriving alongside a variety of early dinosaurs. 
it was a close relative of the slightly younger and larger Aliodon, which would have been a formidable predator comparable to a large wolf in size, although it would have resembled a huge long-tailed badger with a proportionally massive skull. Most basal probe Binanathians were active carnivores, with the most well adapted of these being Trucidocynodon, an animal with semi digitigrade feet and longer limbs than many of its relatives, meaning that it was better able to chase down small prey. About the size of a large Virginia opossum, this genus showed that mammal-like carnivores could still reach decent sizes in a world dominated by terrestrial crocodilian relatives and early dinosaurs. The most derived of the non-mammalian cynodonts, which belong in the clade Protozostrodontia, tended to be smaller, thriving in niches similar to those taken today by shrews, hedgehogs and rodents. The genus Rio Grandia from the late Triassic of Brazil was particularly rodent-like, being about the size of a rat and possessing enlarged forward-pointing incisors. It was native to the Norian Age Cuterita formation, and lived alongside the even smaller and more derived genus Brazilodon, which in most recent studies has been placed as either a very close relative of the mammalia forms or an early mammal instead. Indeed, this tiny 12 cm long animal possessed many derived anatomical traits, including a mammal-like tooth replacement structure, a well-developed secondary palate in the mouth, and a more complex inner ear structure than earlier cynodonts. Like modern shrews and smaller possums, it was a generalist insectivore, while its skeleton indicates that it was an agile animal, being both a good digger and climber, but not specialised for either. However, like many other animal groups, the cynodonts were hit hard by the end Triassic extinction event, with only three groups making it into the Jurassic, with these being the Trithelodontids, the Tritilodontids and the mammalia forms themselves. All of these were small rodent or shrew-like animals, with the bigger and more carnivorous forms dying out. The superficially rodent-like Tritilodontids would be the last of the truly non-mammalian cynodonts, persisting into the early Cretaceous, with the youngest forms being native to what is now China and Japan, living alongside many groups of true mammals, such as multituberculates and early therians. However, this fascinating group, as well as the early relatives of true mammals, deserve their own full length video. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be another paleo profile, this time focusing on the historically significant theropod Megalosaurus, which was the first dinosaur to be scientifically described and named as such. Until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.